All right, guys, NMRC here with you. Been a long time since I posted a video. I think this was the last thing I posted. Sorry, I haven't gone out and got it. Ran, uh, running video. I already put pure brass beadlock wheels on it, stock tires. <clears throat> well, I got this bad boy that came in. And uh, we're going to see if we can put it in this guy today and make it brushless so i'm curious if this will plug in to the uh, stock receiver and all that i know i forgot to mention this does have a two speed high and low i know i didn't say that in the video either <clears throat> but uh <clears throat> excuse me most of their products are always have a two speed other than that guy right there yeah so you look at my crap pile of rigs just just everywhere you know what i mean and then i got a whole stockpile of this next build i'm doing for my sister there's her rams that there's you know all kinds of stuff in there for her <clears throat> but anyway this video is about this little guy here and see if we can plug it into this guy here which would be nice to use a stock radio if not I may throw this in the element, which would be pretty sick because it has a Ford motor mount system in there. And this motor is so small. It's the size of my my uh, <clears throat> seven-month-old son's thumb. It's crazy tiny. All right, let's unbox this. So I guess we could say this is it's an unboxing video, too, of this. Right off the bat. My pinion gear. Here's a little motor. Oh, look at that. I already got a pinion gear on there as well. So they give you two pinion gears. That's nice. And a little sensor. That's where the sensor plugs in right there. Man, this is sick, dude. 4,500 kV, huh? So this might be a little spicy guy right here. Good thing it's censored, that way you can control it. It only has two mounting holes, that's kind of, that's kind of concerning. This might be just for the axial. I don't know if it'll go in that guy or not, but we might find out, we might not. Depending on how ambitious I feel like taking this new rig apart. Here's our ESC, traditional uh, plug just like the axial and you got your plug here that plugs in the receiver which doesn't look like we can use that on there that uh, sucks yeah that's what's nice about axials with this and the fury tech or fear tech or however you want to pronounce it you could plug this right into the stock receiver slash esc but this guy, you can't. So, this might have to go in the element. That kind of sucks. I was wanting to put it in that, but it is what it is. Oh, there's all your instructions on how to probably operate it and all that fun jazz. Kind of curious if they put stickers in here. It's funny, I'm more concerned about the stickers and the instructions here. Yeah, just more more instructions and whatnot to tell you probably how much weight it can handle and probably all that fun stuff. All right, well, there it is right there. I mean, that's like literally the size of the end of my thumb right here. My thumb's actually bigger than it. That's crazy. And then, of course, all around the box has... Uh, what it's for. Let's see here on the back side. It says right there 1 to 2S motor limit OEM. Tells you all the fancy stuff right there. So, oh yeah, look, it has crawler mode. I wonder if you have to get a different programmer <clears throat> or if it'll be an app on your phone like the FearTech. Uh, 
system as an app on your phone. I have to probably read the manual in there and stuff to see how you program it. But, uh, yeah, unfortunately, looks like it's going to have to go on this guy right here. I still need to get another servo for this, for the rear to do the four-wheel steer type stuff that this thing's um, initially set up for. That's the Andorra LCG carbon rails for the Gladiator. That's on that. But uh, <clears throat> let me try and get all these little guys out of the way here, which is fine. I kind of wanted to keep this stock. It's just a just a trail rig. It's not it's not comp rig or nothing, so it, do, it doesn't really need really need that system in it. <clears throat> which I'm fine with. It's got so much crap everywhere. Jesus. Really need to clean up. Alright, so. See, this is the Element uh, little version of the Trail Runner. The SUV. The Forerunner. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Look at that, man. That motor will definitely fit in there. And then I can put my Iguana T T G U E or whatever the hell they call that ESC that because they could run 3S. I can put that bad boy in there and get rid of that piece of crap Lizard Pro ESC that sucks. Oh, that'll work. That'll work. All right. Well, let's get it to getting in there. All right, guys. So I had to put it in the in the element here. Here's the K five FCX. I keep calling it the FMS. It's called the FCX twenty four. There's no way in hell that's a twenty four scale engine. That's a one eighteenth. <clears throat> I try to line up the whole like the motor next to it. There ain't no way. Watch, I'll grab. Oh, don't throw that pinion gear. Uh, so let me get this drive shaft out of the way. There we go. So, as you can see, there's no way. See how much smaller that motor is? Let alone the shaft to the pinion. Let alone that pinion gear to that pinion gear. There's no way. See that? It's way bigger. So that motor right here will not fit in this transmission, which is crazy weird. Here's the cover, and it has a big old gear on it, like a planetary <clears throat> gear system in it. It's pretty wild. And then see, there's the gears inside there. They're all plastic, other than the pinion's brass, so it doesn't eat up the plastic gears. But it does bolt right into an actual, quote, 24. This is the element. It bolted right in there. I just had to take the pinion gear off the stock motor out of this. Take that pinion gear off and put it on there. The pinion gears that this thing comes with are too small. And that pinion gear here, that little white one, is even smaller than that one. <clears throat> that it came on the motor with so uh, but we got it in the element so now I can switch this ESC out like I wanted to and then I can put this ESC here and uh, and then we'll plug her in and, and see what she does how smooth it is and all that stuff All right, guys, we got the uh, Spectrum little system in the element right here. See, there's the K5 in the background. I'm going to go ahead and power it up. My opinion, it's not as smooth as the Fury Tech. But uh, we don't have the programming stuff for it. So that's about as slow as I can go. And I'm running the GT5. Fly Sky radio for it. And it kind of acts weird. It binds up. 
and then see, and then have to give it more throttle for it to do it, and it does it in both ways. So who knows? It might need tuning to fix that. Let's see. It's not smooth. It should have climbed that right there, and it didn't. Try again. See, it's already binding up. It's ridiculous. See how it does that? I wasn't doing it that bad earlier. That's wild. I know my battery's fully charged. smoother than that. My brush system didn't have any problems like this is having. guys my drive shaft angles too. I'll just flip it upside down and see it's not bad. That one's not too bad either. But for some reason it's causing a bit of a cogging type issue. And I'm sure I have that plugged in the right way. But, uh, yeah. Kind of, kind of cogging for some reason. I don't, I don't understand why. But it is. I don't see where it's plugged in at on the ESC here. Oh, on the side. I don't know. That's kind of stupid to watch. I'll go in reverse. See? It's not as bad, but it still does it. And I have to progressively give it more throttle so it'll stay going to, like, work its way out of it. But the Fury Tech by far is way smoother than uh, this little motor is, this system. Even just to go up that, see it's all wigging out. See, that's stupid. <laughs> Yep, there you go, guys. Get to see this little thing in action. I'll try and program it. See what I got to do to program it and all that fun stuff. And uh, go from there with it. And uh, get it out and test it along with that. 